Hey everyone, it's Professor Primpton. In this video we're going to talk about the distance and midpoint formulas. So in this video we're going to talk about how to find the distance between two points in the rectangular coordinate system and also how to find the midpoint of a line segment between two points in the Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system. In the next video we'll talk about equations of circles. So let's start off with the distance formula. You can actually find out the distance formula or derive the distance formula using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So let's say you have two points in the rectangular coordinate system. One point is at x1, y sub 1, and the other point is at x sub 2, y sub 2. So you have any two points in the rectangular coordinate system. Let's label the first point, x1, y1, as p sub 1, and the other point is x2, y sub 2, and that's p2. And you want to find out what is this distance between the two points, and that's lowercase d. All right, so where does the Pythagorean theorem come in? Well, notice that you can actually construct or draw a right triangle. So if you take P1 is X1, Y1, and you draw a horizontal line segment to the right, so that's directly underneath P sub 2, the Y coordinates will always be the same because it's on a horizontal line. So this point has the Y1, or the Y coordinate is Y1. And same reason, if you draw a vertical line that's directly below P2, so you draw a vertical line, so that it's at the same level as this other point, P1. Then you get this point in the corner of the right triangle as x sub 2, y sub 1. The distance between P1, x1, y1, and the distance between x2, y1. And then we're going to find out the distance between P2, x2, y2, and x2, y1. So you have a right triangle. And so we can use the Pythagorean theorem because we're talking about the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. So let's find out the length of this bottom side first, or this, this leg. Notice that the y coordinates are the same, so there's no distance in the y coordinates. But the x coordinates do change. They go from x1 to x2. Find out the distance, you subtract the two x coordinates. So subtract x2 minus x sub 1, and remember, distance is only a positive number, or 0, so to make sure you get a positive number from, from subtracting, you need absolute value around x2 minus x1. And so this is the distance between x1 and x2. Absolute value, x2 minus x1. And so for the same reason, notice that the y coordinates are y2 for this point p2 and y1 when this point is in the corner of the right triangle. The x coordinates stay the same because it's on a vertical line. We want to find out the distance between the y coordinates. So y2 subtract y1, and then you need the absolute value again to make sure that the distance is actually a positive number. So this will give you the distance between y1 and y2. and it's the absolute value of y2 minus y1. So the distance between x2 and x1 is absolute value x2 minus x1, and the distance between y1 and y2 is the absolute value of y2 minus y1. Now, why is that important? Well, we want to find out the three lengths of the triangle, and they're related by the Pythagorean theorem. We want to find out the length of the hypotenuse. So Pythagorean theorem says the length of the hypotenuse squared is equal to the length of the other two sides squared when they're added together. So, D is the length of the hypotenuse, so square it. So that's like the C in the Pythagorean theorem. Then you have the other two lengths of the legs, and you square those. So, x2 minus x1 was the length between x2 and x1. You square it. And then you have the length between y2 and y1, so y2 minus y1, and you square that distance. Now, notice that the absolute value is not needed here. When you square a negative number, it's a positive answer. When you square a positive number, you also get a positive answer. So the absolute values are not needed when you square a number. So the absolute values can be dropped. And so now notice that if you want to find out what the distance d is, 
So to cancel out the square power, you take the square root on both sides. And so you have d is equal to plus or minus square root of the right-hand side of the equation. x2 minus x1 in parentheses, all squared, plus the difference between the y values, y2 minus y1, all squared. Now again, distance cannot be a negative number. It has to be a positive number or zero. So you can drop the plus or minus and only talk about the principal square root. So it would be d equals the positive square root of the difference between the x values squared and the difference between the y values squared. And you add up those two difference, those two squared differences. And so this is what's called the distance formula. The distance formula is given as lowercase d, the distance between two points, x1, y1, and x sub 2, y sub 2, and any two points in the Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system is d equals the principal square root, so square root of x2 minus x1 in parentheses squared plus the difference between the y values, y2 minus y1 in parentheses squared, and you add those squared differences. So to find the distance between two points, you find the square of the difference between the x-coordinates, you find the square of the difference between the y-coordinates, and you add those two together, and then you take the principal square root of the sum to get the distance between the two points. Now, one important note is that when you use the distance formula, it does not matter which point you call x1, y1, or x2, y2. It's very similar to the slope formula. When we found slope earlier in the class, it didn't matter which one we called x1, y1, or x2, y2. Same thing for the distance formula. As long as you call one point x1, y1, and the other one x2, y2, it doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. So let's try this distance formula out. So in example one, find the distance between the points negative one comma four and three comma negative two. Express your answer in simplified radical form. So leave your answer in radicals. And then also round your answer to two decimal places. So let's start off with the first step. Call one point x1, y1, and the other point x2, y2. So I'm going to call negative 1, 4 is my x1, y1. And 3, negative 2 is x2, y2. And we want to find out the distance between these two points. Okay, so let's use the formula. The distance formula is d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 in parentheses all squared. So let's see. If you take the difference of the x coordinates, you would get 3 subtract negative 1, and that's in parentheses all squared plus the difference of the y coordinates, negative 2 subtract 4, all squared. Okay, so now simplify the signs. You have the distance is equal to the square root of 3 subtract negative 1 becomes 3 plus 1, all squared, plus negative 2 subtract 4, and that's all squared. And that's all underneath the square root. Okay, and now keep simplifying. You have 3 plus 1 is 4 squared, and then negative 2 subtract 4 is negative 6 in parentheses squared. Another important note is that you can't take the square root and cancel the squares. Okay, You have a sum after you square. So you need to find out what 4 squared is and negative 6 squared is, add them together, and then take the square root. Okay, If you, took the, if you cancel out the square root with the squares, that would be incorrect. So 4 squared gives you 16. And negative 6 in parentheses squared is positive 36. So 16 plus 36 is the square root of 52. Now, square root of 52, that is not in simplified radical form. Okay, notice that 52 has a perfect square that goes into it evenly. So the number that goes into 52 that's a perfect square is 4. So let's rewrite this. It would be square root of 52 is square root of 4 goes into 52 13 times, so 4 times 13, and now we can use a radical property to rewrite this as square root of 4 times square root of 13, so they each get their own square root, and now why do we do this? Because square root of 4 can be simplified as just 2. So in simplified radical form, you get 2 times the square root of 13.
Okay, and now the next part of the problem is round your answer to two decimal places. So this doesn't give us a good idea of how far the two points are apart in the rectangular coordinate system. If you round, put this in the calculator, 2 times square root of 13, and you'll get approximately 7.21. So in other words, they're, the two points are 7.21 units apart. Okay, that was the distance formula. Now let's talk about the midpoint formula. Now the difference between the distance formula and the midpoint formula. The distance formula will give you a number as the answer because you're talking about distance, a measurement. The midpoint will actually give you a point. So you'll have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So the distance formula, you can actually derive it using the Pythagorean theorem. You can actually get the midpoint formula by talking about what does the midpoint actually mean. So the midpoint of a line segment is the midway point of the x coordinates and the midway point between the y coordinates. That's what the midpoint actually is. And why does this actually come in? Well, we're going to talk about in an example later in this video where, say you have two points at the end of a diameter of a circle. So it has a tie-in with what we're going to talk about in the next video with circles. So you have this diameter where two points are on the opposite ends of a diameter on a circle, and you want to find out what is the center of the circle. That would be the midpoint. So let's talk about the midpoint. So you have a line segment. So you have two points in the rectangular coordinate system and you connect them with a line. So one point is x1, y1, and the other point is x2, y2. And you want to find out what is the point, the x coordinate and the y coordinate, what is the point between the two ends of the line segment that's halfway, or the midpoint. The midpoint formula says you take x1 and x2, so you take the x coordinates of the two points and you add them and divide by two. The y coordinate works the same way. You take the y coordinate y1 and the y coordinate y2, you add them together and you divide by two. So in other words, if you want to find the midpoint of a line segment between two points, you find the average of the two x coordinates. So you take the x coordinates and you average them, you add them together and divide by two. And then you also do the same thing for the y coordinates. You find the average of the y coordinates by adding them together, y1 plus y2, and then divide by two. So the midpoint is the point that's halfway between the x-coordinates and also halfway between the y-coordinates. And make sure you have an ordered pair written as an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate because the midpoint is a point, not just a number. All right, let's try out the midpoint formula. Find the midpoint of the line segment with endpoints 1, negative 6 and negative 8, negative 4. So again, it doesn't matter how you label the points, x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm going to call 1, negative 6 is x1, y1. Negative 8, negative 4 is x2, y2. And this time we're going to find out the midpoint of the line segment. All right, midpoint formula says the midpoint, we'll call it capital M because it's a point. You have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. The X coordinate is X1 plus X2 divided by two. It's a plus because you want to find the average. So you add them together and divide by two. And same thing for the Y coordinates. Y1 plus Y2 and then also divide by two. So when you do that, you'll have the ordered pair 1 plus negative 8, and then divide by 2, comma, because it's a, you also have the y coordinate, negative 6 plus negative 4, and then divide by 2 again. So the midpoint is 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7, so negative 7 divided by 2, comma, negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10 and then divide by 2. And so of course that does simplify the y coordinate sum. Negative 7 divided by 2 is the x coordinate and negative 5 is the y coordinate. Now again just like with the distance formula you don't really have an idea of where is this midpoint between the two points. Well if you change all the fractions to decimals you can also have this written as negative 3.5 comma negative 5. 
So in other words, negative 3.5 is halfway between the x-coordinates, and negative 5 is halfway between the y-coordinates of this line segment. So you can have your answer in fraction form or in decimal form. Okay, example 3. We're going to take what we've learned in this video involving the distance and midpoint formulas and apply them in terms of circles. So if you have, neg if you have 7, 13, and negative 3, negative 11, these are endpoints of a diameter of a circle. So in other words, you have a line that goes through the center of the circle. One point is at 7, 13, and the other point is at negative 3, negative 11 on the circle. What is the length of the circle's radius? So one observation about circles is since the diameter of a circle is twice the length of the radius of the circle, we need to first use the distance formula. to find the distance between the two points. So how is that helpful? Well, if we know the length of the diameter, and the diameter is twice the length of the radius, then we can find out the length of the radius, which is what the, the problem is actually asking us to find. So let's use the distance formula. So d equals the square root of the difference between the x-coordinates. So x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. So remember, the distance formula, you are trying to find out what is the difference or the distance between the x's and what is the distance between the y-coordinates. So it's not like the midpoint formula. Midpoint formula, you're trying to find the average. Distance, you're trying to find out what is the distance between the x's and the y's. And you square those distances, and then you finally add them and take the square root. So again, let's call one point x1, y1. So let's call 7, 13. That will be the x1, y1. And negative 3, negative 11 will be x2, y2. And now substitute these into the formula. So you have square root of x2 subtract x1 would be negative 3 subtract 7 and square that distance plus y2 minus y1 negative 11 subtract 13 and then square that distance so inside the square root you have negative 10 all squared plus negative 11 minus 13 is negative 24 all squared and so this simplifies to square root of negative 10 squared is 100 plus negative 24 squared is 576. And so inside the square root is 676. And this does come out to be a whole number. It's 26. So that means we just found out the length of the diameter because these two points were at the end of a diameter of the circle. So the diameter is 26. This means that the radius would have a length of 13. And that's it. We don't need to find out what the center of the circle is. We'll save that for the next video. But we're just talking about distance in this problem. Find out the length of the radius, or find out the length of the circle's radius. And we found out the length of the diameter using the distance formula. And we knew something about circles that the radius is half the length 
of its diameter. So half of 26 would give you 13. So this is a good point to stop this first video on midpoint and distance formulas. In the next video, we'll talk about equations of circles and how to find out what the center of a circle is and how to find out what the radius of a, cir of a circle is from its equation. So if you have any questions about this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions about any of the problems in the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about equations of circles.